Hello, everybody. How are you? This is our Monday get together. It's called the pop up and uh, we're uh, we're ready. To... Boy, a lot of people are waiting. Son of a bitch. Okay. All right. Uh, let me uh, let me see here. Let's let some of these people in now admit all. Okay. And here comes Edward Berger. And Paul Eleven and Charlie Wallace and uh, 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 Candace and <laughs> Len Lafrisco. Hello to all of you. These are the people who are uh, jumping in here. Let me see. We got all of them. Okay, we do. I think. Yeah. So far, mm -hmm. I got to add the new ones, which is Mandy O'Brien and Charlene Solis and. Uh, is that pronounced? Is that pronounced Solus? Can uh, or is it pronounced Solus? Solus. Solus. Okay, as in Soulless. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, I just don't want to get it wrong. Hello, Mandy. How are you? That's Good. How are you? Nice little frock you have on today. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Very flowery and spring-like. Spring, finally. Yeah. Hopefully. It's it's springtime, folks. It's springtime. Uh, let me see here. I just want to go. Just make sure that I'm. Uh, I got everything I need here, so that we can uh, do a, a nice little program. This is our. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's not what I wanted. Here we go. Here we go. Um, this is our uh, our Monday program, which is just really nice. Okay, just nice. Okay, with nice people. We have to do something about that. Right? <laughs> well, I can always call up my friend Phil. He'll be happy to join, and then you can uh, deal with it. You know, <laughs> you, you can ask these people what that's like. You know, uh, there are there are people who will call this program and, and make trouble if I let them, but I ask them not to because this is not the same kind of show as the other one. Uh, but anyway, uh, and there's Mar there's Marjorie Miller. You all know her. She is the um, the aging frau of mine. <laughs> <laughs> she's aging so fast; she's going to surpass me. Um, That's speak not for yourself, nice. buddy. That's <laughs> not you, nice. You, you're going to be eighty this year, right? You know, we don't have to discuss it, Alex. <laughs> yes, we do. No, we don't. You should be proud of it. You're a great looking uh, 80 year old. 80 I'm 79 and a half, so let's not push it. Oh, really? Is that what are you back to what you did when you were a kid? <laughs> you know, kids never admit what age they are. How old are you? Well, I'm three and three quarters. <laughs> and what will you be next month? I will be at, uh, at, at, at three and and nine tenths, of, you know, they go through all of that. Okay. Maybe you could go back to months. Maybe she could be 960 months. Yeah. Right. Uh, about yeah. days. <laughs> How many days? I wonder. I, I, oh, let's see here. Uh, let me ask uh, Echo. Echo, <laughs> how many days since December 18th, 1939? Monday. December 18th, 1939, 30,435 days ago. 30, wow. over what 30, did she 000, say? I didn't hear. 30,000, uh, and then it did. 487 days. 487, day. 487 yeah. days. Boy, am I exhausted. <laughs> 30,000 days. 30, yeah, 30,000. Well, you know, check your own. You'll probably be amazed yeah. by how much it is. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, but I'll be dead longer than that. So, yeah, I was thinking about that yesterday. I, I start thinking about these things. I th start thinking about eternity, you know, and that the whole world's going to keep going on without me. Or the question is that once you're dead, does it go on without you? <laughs> I would say At yes. least from your perspective, it doesn't go on without you. The whole world comes to an end. But doesn't you become dust, stardust, and energy? Oh, really? So you isn't, continue isn't, on. Isn't that sweet? That's a nice way of saying you're dead. 
Well, you continue on in another form. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know. I, I get, I get the really thinking about this constantly. You know, you know, I do. You know, I, mean, I know you do. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's just, um, it's just that everybody around me is dying. You know, and uh, I'm the I'm the only one left alive now. I have I have some other people. I guess I could call my best friend because they've they were really down on the list, but I'm sure they're going to be flattered. <laughs> well, I they hear this. You know, so uh, who who's my best friend now? I guess it's Marjorie. Yeah, yeah, as it should be. Yeah, as it should. Yes. Uh, but I have a headache today here. A sign, I think it's a sinus headache right up here. It's, it's probably a tumor. A pressure <laughs> well, it was hurting me last night, you know. If it's not a tumor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So anyway, so how have you all been? How How is everything up in Canada? Uh, things are good. Things are really good. It's it's the one year anniversary of the Letterman podcast this week, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, good. It's it's now the uh, ninth anniversary of Gabnet. Wow. Oh. This yeah. week? Uh, uh, beginning of of April, I think. Yeah. Awesome. I haven't been able to figure it out anymore. <laughs> it's just I made up the new announcements for it, so you know. <laughs> Uh, so we're in our ninth year. So when you get to nine years, let me know about it. I absolutely <laughs> will. Yeah. We recorded a very special episode on Thursday that's going to come out this week uh, for our anniversary episode with Paul Schaefer. Oh, okay. nice. Who's he? Really? Yeah. Who is he? Was... Paul <laughs> Schaefer. He... <laughs> he was on Johnny Carson. Oh, that's the guy who was at my house a couple of, about a couple of years ago. Wasn't he? <laughs> he was at my house, actually. He hung Paul out was? There. He hung out here with uh, with uh, Buddy Love. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's super cool. What do you mean it's super cool? He walked in the door and sat down. <laughs> what was cool? If Paul Schaefer that? walked in my house and sat down, I'd say that's super cool, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. You know, back in uh, on my couch. Uh, 75 or 5, I think, we visited California, and yeah. we went to see a... Uh, a pilot being done and the pilot was a year at the top with that Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. Yep. <laughs> so I saw that film, I saw that pilot being uh, made and Mickey Rooney was on there that day as well. Yeah. Mickey Rooney was on the show and uh, who else? There was another guy. Was it? Greg, Greg Evigan maybe? Yeah, Greg Evigan. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We were sitting in the studio audience for that pilot, which I think aired once. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. Very, I, I wish I had known that wait, before wait, I talked wait, to him. Wait, Next you, time he comes on, I'm going to mention you, that uh, you, you, oh, I rub shoulders with somebody who was at the pilot. You always <laughs> say things to an excess. I mean, you said, that's awesome. What do you mean? What was awesome about it? It was a pilot that didn't even make it that it was, it got canceled. It was terrible. Here's well, Okay, so I look at it from a different lens. It's awesome to me because Paul went from Saturday Night Live, uh, went to the year at the top, and then started a legendary career with letterman i also think it's awesome that originally he was pitched to be george costanza on seinfeld mm. um i really i i like those little tidbits that paul did a sitcom and and uh and I then found believe, his way I don't, so i don't believe that you don't believe that no okay and i don't <laughs> believe it because paul schaefer was way too young to play george costanza's father no 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 no, 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 no. he, he was, was offered george Oh, he was offered George. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but he didn't get it. So what's the story? <laughs> well, no, he didn't leave Letterman. He didn't leave Letterman for it. But it's just it's 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 history to me. I I, I like these. Uh, I like this. I like the I like the idea of the road not taken, or the road that started taken but you learn from it. Mm. And that's what a year at the top was. It was a, it was a piece of crap. I'll tell you. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> and i was only about 16 so my so. my so the road not taken so my my road not taken i guess was i was offered the role of rachel on on friends <laughs> <laughs> nice but i but i didn't get it 
Um, but uh, no, we tend to over express things. No, year at the top isn't even worth talking about. I mean, it, it did it even make it past pilot? I think they did two or three episodes. It's the handful. They show them, though. I don't think so, to be honest. Now, correct me. I'm going to tell you the plot of A Year at the Top. Okay. Okay. It was really kind of a ripoff of Damn Yankees, I think. Uh, and and it, it's all about a, a guy who was an old guy played by Mickey Rooney, who is a musician. No, it's, that's Greg Evigan, I think. Oh, really? I was great. great Mickey yeah. Rooney played the devil. The devil. He was selling oh, okay. his, right. He was selling so his that. soul to for a year at the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that was that was the plot of the show. And, and yeah. not an original plot. Uh, no. Know. So as, as, I don't know what they were going to do in year two. It's mm -hmm. a second year at the top. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we, yeah, right. You want another year at the top? <laughs> another pack with the devil. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh, it was five episodes. And the reason why Paul was so excited about it was it's an it was a Norman Lear show. Yes. And the yeah. idea of being able to work with Norman Lear at that point uh, was provocative, at, at, so to how, say the least. How, how do you feel about being part of a show that Norman Lear would rather forget? <laughs> I mean, he never he really missed, and boy, did he miss. I on think that. that's the question I would ask Paul Schaefer. How, how can part of a pilot that if they mention it to Norman Lear, he has a bad memory? Yeah, you know. Um, but those were in the days where anything Norman Lear did, they just put on. Yep. You know, and apparently this was so bad they didn't even go that far. Yeah, I think they ran it as a summer replacement or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But a lot of people are involved in failures before they make it, you know. I mean, look at all the things George Clooney did before he wound up on ER. Mm -hmm. what, what was it? He was um what Facts of Life. Facts of Life. Yeah. Roseanne. Roseanne. They do really? Roseanne. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of these people, especially the ones that were latecomers, because you gotta realize by the time George Clooney made it, he was no spring chicken. You know, and uh, has had a very successful career since, but he was very fortunate that ER came along. Otherwise, he'd be known as that guy who was on Facts of Life. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, I like to bring it up like, you got to know when to die. Okay. <laughs> An example of that was uh, Henry Fonda. Now, do you remember what Henry Fonda's last movie was? The one with this on golden pond? Yes, golden on pond. Golden Pond. Okay. On Golden Pond. His last film, which I think he was nominated for an Academy Award for. I think he made She accepted more. it for him. She accepted yeah, it for she him. She accepted it for him. He won the Academy Award. For yeah. Him. If he had died, and he died very shortly after that was finished, that's why she accepted it for him. Uh, if he had died before that, his last film would have been Swarm. <laughs> so you gotta you know, say that like that was a bad movie you gotta go hey i just did a great film so long folks goodbye <laughs> don't forget to nominate me for an academy award <laughs> you know who else did a, a, a last film uh spencer tracy yeah guess who's coming to dinner right oh wow he did that while he was dying yeah. Well, yeah, just about. Yeah. Uh, and I, I watched that film. I never so watched it. Okay. So a couple of months ago, it was on TCM. And I said, well, I've never watched Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I suppose I have to. It's the law. Okay. So I watched it and I went, wow, what a just liberal's idea of, of, uh, of, of oh, yeah. quality was in that film. I mean, it, they they could never make that film today. They'd be laughed out of town. Absolutely. You know, but it was a liberal's idea of what was right, a white liberal's idea of what was right. You know, like it couldn't just be some really black guy. No, it had to be Sidney Poitier. You know who who, who played a doctor? Who my dad doctor. was a doctor. Give me a break. Oh, <laughs> I, I no. And they wouldn't. And oh, they wouldn't oh, have. Oh, a... Wait a minute. Let me. Correct, Charlie. Only on the sitcom you were in with Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> you know.
know, why is it though that, I mean, yes, your father was a doctor and that was wonderful and that was terrific. And I, I admire him for being a doctor at a time when, you know, we probably didn't have many blacks in those professions, but, but the question is, did you really like the fact that they always had to portray a black person as a doctor in order to make it accepted? You know, hey, that's better than not being portrayed at all. <laughs> well, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, but anyway, your doctor father was a doctor. How what kind of doctor? He's a GP, general GP. practitioner. Oh, yeah. good. That's the best. Went on house calls. Huh? Oh, no kidding. Wow. House calls. He had back the in the bag, 60s. Had a little bag and everything, right? Yeah. What was in that bag? His lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, lots of good stuff in that bag. I, mean, I I never could figure out that you had a doctor how he could do everything he had to do out of that little bag. And they did it. He yeah, had little tiny vials of just about every drug you could ever need. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. 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 I can't do your job with that's two hair What? What did somebody say? Oh, I, I don't know. Oh. Sorry, I'll mute myself. Oh, oh, that's a, yeah, somebody in the background there. Yeah, we'd love to hear your environment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. We just didn't know who said it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, um, you know, I mean, it's 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 pretty uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting how how our tastes change. But when you go back and you watch that movie, it's just it's like a white producer's idea of what is really liberal you yeah. know and i guess it was okay for the time i mean you know at least there, there were liberals who thought that way you know but they still didn't think to put any other oh they no there were two black people other black people in that film the mother and the father yeah yeah and the mother was played by i believe ruby d wasn't it no no who i don't remember her name but it wasn't ruby d really what year did it come out a long time ago. Four, <laughs> Wait a minute. Guess who's coming to dinner? I can look it up here on my. Oh, Catherine okay. Hepper, Isabel. Are you Sanford. thinking of Isabel Sanford? Uh, uh, yeah. Which what, what? E. Richards. What? E. Really? Richards. Yeah, I can see her face. Catherine the the, 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 yeah. the father of, of Sydney Poitier was the one that had all the problems with with the. Uh, uh, with the intermarriage. Yeah, let but, me see here. But uh, see. Uh, what I I remember that they were on their way to uh, he he had some kind of a fancy job with the UN and they and they would uh, they would get married and 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 live in Switzerland and yeah you know, like no problems. Well, Isabel Sanford wasn't that was the that, name of the character? She was the maid. She was the maid. No, she was the Louis. No, she was the Louise. Luis, oh, okay. Oh, so Isabel yeah. Isabel Sanford played the mother in that, and Roy Glenn played the father. What year did it come out, Alex? The year was... 67. 1867. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. That was close. That's a 64. Where's the, where's the date on it? I can't find the date. Yeah. Guess who's... Oh, 1967. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for 67, I guess it was okay, you know. Things were starting to change, finally. Uh, yeah, but anyway. So what else is happening in this wonderful world of ours? Every day I say to Marjorie, well, what's the shooting today? Oh, God, there was another one. <laughs> I mean, every day, Yeah. you know, and I'm going, aren't people getting sick of this? You know, aren't they getting sick of this happening? Yeah, so I oy vey is me, as my mother used to say. Uh, have we been watching anything interesting, Marjorie? Perry Mason. Perry Mason, good show. And uh, we, Barry, we watched Barry. The, we watched the new Barry. Started Barry. Very, very good show, not disappointed at all. Mrs. Maisel wasn't disappointed. Mrs. Maisel started up again. Everything's starting up right now. Everything's starting up again, except Succession is winding down. And I, I keep saying, since he died, why should I watch that show? 
Well, it's it's interesting to watch all the infighting. Everybody, but it's been going on for the last four years. It's been the same. No, but plot. now he's not around, so they're really fighting. You know, the, the real the real plot of that show is which Murdoch will survive. <laughs> you know? Because really, it's just kind of all based on Murdoch and the and the kids involved in that family. Um, so. In, in which case, by the way, the female in the Murdoch family is probably the most talented to rise to the top, but isn't going to because she's a female. So it's kind of like succession, isn't it? So anyway, so we're watching that. And uh, but is there anything else really to watch? Oh, well, you watch a lot of crummy. You, you like to watch little animals killing other little animals. <laughs> We just finished White Lotus. That was really good. Oh, that was great. That was great. Yeah. I finally watched The Last of Us. Yeah. And I really, really liked it. It was good. Right. Now they are so good. Never, now, you never I played didn't the like game, it right? No way. Uh-uh. Never played the game. Mm -mm. Watched the show. Loved it, right? Mm -hmm. Marjorie yeah. refuses to like it because I do. <laughs> no, that's not why. I just didn't like it. What was wrong with it? I think it's more of a male thing. No, it's not, obviously not. Except Charlie. Well, Charlie liked it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> have, you, have you seen it, uh, uh, Mandy? No, that's the one I think I was asking y'all about too. Like, I have to have played the game to watch it. No, no you don't need to watch the no, game. No, in fact, you're you're probably in better shape if you didn't play the game. Because I always had to watch it twice. Myself, as somebody who knows the game, I know what's coming next. And then with Marjorie, where I just kind of watched it, and and I liked, it. I, I I really said that they did an incredible job of not keeping anybody who didn't play the game out. Oh, stop it, Marjorie! The only human being in America didn't like that show. Yeah. Hey. How about you, Charlie? Did you like it? I loved it. See, now we got two people here who loved it. Anybody else watch uh, Last of Us? No. Okay. I've been there watching, you go, Alex. I've been watching Why oh, yeah. Oh, and that's I'm probably behind the times, but I just started you, watching. You're watching what? Why Women Kill. I love that one. That's a great show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't see that one. It's just a soapy kind of. I don't want to. I guess would you say, Charlie? Would you say it's kind of like a comedy, but yeah. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. But it's kind of soapy, dishy. You know, it's like. But there's two seasons, evidently, and so I'm at the end of the first season. I, I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Here's Got Lucy Lou in it. Is Lucy Lou Albert? is so is cute. Our Albert. Albert. There he is. Albert bird. shaved his beard. Hey, oh, hey, oh, all right. Hey, God, oh. Look at that. Thanks. Is it clean shaven all the way or just no no I have the it's, it's all gray so you can't see it, but <laughs> yeah. whatever the kids are calling this bit now. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're almost oh, kind of doing yeah. what I do, except I do this down here. But you, you were you were you were looking pretty much like uh the Smith brothers there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like Dave Letterman. Doesn't matter. I do what I want to do and I have fun. Good. Well, That's right. Let's face yeah. it. What do you have to do in Florida? But sit down there and uh, not get an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> don't need one. Doesn't matter to me. I don't need one. Yeah, it doesn't affect me. Nope. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, what else is there to do in Florida but grow a beard, right? Or shave the beard. And <laughs> did your wife hate it? Yes. Oh, and that's why you <laughs> did, not why I did that. No. No, it's no. not why you did it. Like that she waited a year before I shaved it. Yeah. So, you know, she was tortured for a year. And she but, didn't say anything about it? Oh, of course she did. Oh, okay. So you Do you know my wife? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then you know, she did. She's not shy. Oh, so she every day it was like, "Will you get rid of that beard?" No, no, not every day. I, most day it wasn't every day, but a couple of times a week I'd get, you know, the eye roll or something like that. But. In case people don't know, uh, Albert was formerly my producer here in New York City yes. uh, on several occasions in several incarnations. And uh, he also uh, grew a beard that was just almost made Dave Dave's Letterman type beard. Made Dave's look, look small. 
no, no, yeah. it wasn't. As, it wasn't as big as Dave's. It was smaller than Dave's, I think. Oh, really? But just as bad. Oh wow! Thanks. <laughs> High praise. That's not the worst thing I've heard about it, though. Yeah. yeah. It was generally unaccepted. So, and how's everybody else doing? Yeah, we're um, well. We're all trying to grow beards now. Every one of us. So, <laughs> you're, some of you are doing well, and some of you. Every time I well. try to grow a beard, I can't get it to go past a certain length before I have to cut it down, mm -hmm. because. When I'm sleeping, didn't you find that the beard kind of got no rubbed around in your face no. and stuff when you laid sideways on the pillow? Never had a problem with it. No, really? really? Yeah. But I'm not, you know, I don't have as many things as you do, Alex. Nobody has as many things as you do. <laughs> That's for sure. Saying, right, Marjorie? What do you mean yes. as many things as I do? Things Issues. to complain about. Oh, Alex's issues. No, Marjorie, they aren't even issues. They most of them don't even exist. Well, you're right. I'm most talking about things to like, complain about. I, I I agree. And rather than go to a doctor, he goes on the computer. Well, welcome to America, everybody. Uh, yeah. I uh, went to our our doctor uh, that we go to our GP. Um. I said, well, I was looking something up on the web. Is it okay to look up stuff on the web for medicine? He said, it's the best place to find answers. Well, if you he, go he to more than one site, yes. No, but he approved of that. He, yeah, he, but Alex, every time you go there, you've got cancer, you've got this, you've got that. <laughs> well, I had cancer, so I was right. <laughs> <laughs> had to say the C word, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, she she had to bring up the c word. He yeah. Still does it. Oh, I know that'll never end. <laughs> you don't know as much as I know. Thank I goodness for that. Twenty four seven. You know when I when I didn't spend uh, you know six to eight hours a day with him, uh, you got the brunt of that. Sorry to I still sorry get to say, the brunt Mark. Of it. yeah, yeah. I didn't complain to you about my health, did I? Oh, kidding. <laughs> 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 And back then, back then, not only was it health, but it was girlfriends also. Oh, it was girlfriends <laughs> also. For a little while before Marjorie. But not a lot when Marjorie came into the picture, which is a nice thing to say. Thank well, you. I but there no was, a, there were, of course, there was a little bit Marjorie, you know. <laughs> I had no real complaints. Come on, man. The, the, you're talking to people that see you every week. Yeah. They know better than that. <laughs> we knew him when. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, it, it's funny. People mentioned to me that um, when I had cancer, prostate cancer. Is it over? Is it finished? I think it, we're, we're into about, we're getting going into the fourth year. Okay. There's no, no discernible PSA. Good, good. Right? But anyway, that that's the way they judge it. Um, but I, uh, Marjorie, I have to admit, I handled that very well. Yes, you did. Well, I, I will you admit know, it too, because I, when I spoke to you and you first mentioned it, I thought, oh, oh my goodness, he's got, oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to hear this forever. <laughs> and you were very calm and cool about it. Very surprising. Well, and Albert, it happened like two weeks before the whole COVID I had, shutdown. I had to deal with it, you know. It was before the COVID shutdown. Oh, you just right. made it. COVID. COVID yeah. came in and saved the day. The other that's side. Right. Well, no, but what happened is I got my my the, the my prostate seeds, which was the final part of the process. It was held off a week because they couldn't find a part. This is at Mount Sinai Hospital. They couldn't find a part. Okay. So I went back the next week and I had it. And if it had to wait one more week, I never would have gotten it because they did away with that kind of surgery for many months at Mount Sinai. Everything was shutting down. The last day you could have gotten it done. Right. So I was very lucky. Very lucky. Yep. Otherwise, I might have started acting crazy over the fact that I couldn't get it done, you know. So, but that was, you know, but I uh, know I'm what when I really got something wrong with me, then I deal with it. It's it's and very strange when you don't have something wrong with you you deal with it too but not in a good way <laughs> but not in a good way no. 
And what about everybody else? I haven't seen these faces in a while. Oh, come on. You, well, you, well, that's because you don't call us on Monday. I know. I haven't. I haven't. You know, you have the Mondays. Well, you have. Let, let's go through good. everybody. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, how are you, uh, Mike Chisholm? Doing great. Uh, Albert, you keep these stories coming. They are fantastic. You know, you can make up your own and they're probably true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wait for me to come and tell you. God, I'm a legend. Uh, Charlie, <laughs> how have you been, Charlie? I've been doing pretty good. Almost had a nervous breakdown beginning of the year, but outside of that, I'm doing great. Why do you have a nervous breakdown? You didn't tell me about that. No, no, this is, they had a whole complete changeover of the people to handle the softball program in Austin. Wow. And they didn't know their ass from a hole in the ground. And it just drove me crazy. Yeah, Everything better what, now. what he does is you, uh, you what you train people to be. I right? train them, but, but I also have to handle the payroll. All the umpires I have to keep track of how many games they worked and you know how Wait, much they people paid. get paid for doing that umpiring. Oh, you better believe it. How much? <laughs> how much? It's Where twenty-five dollars a game. Twenty-five dollars a game. Four Where games a night. Where do I sign up? Four games a <laughs> night. Yep. So that's a hundred dollars a day. Yep. Every time we get rained out, it costs me a hundred dollars. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. Well, well, is there any way I can sign up for this? Or <laughs> yeah, move to Austin. I have to move to Austin. <laughs> well, first you'd have to leave the house. Yes, yeah. that's probably, that too. probably never gonna happen. Oh, come on. I left it yesterday. So you got another four months before your next time leaving the house. <laughs> well, give me an answer on why I should, you know. Anyway. Hey, Charlie, you're in Austin, right? Yeah. Have you been, uh, have you heard anything about Rogan's new comedy club? No. Nope. Comedy Mothership. Apparently it's open there now. Apparently it's <laughs> really, really good. Rogan, you're talking about, oh, <laughs> Seth, I always thought you were talking about Joe Rogan. Everybody no, it is. <laughs> Joe Rogan opened up a comedy club in, in uh, uh, Austin. Okay, well, I'm not interested in anything Joe Rogan. I doing. quite agree with you. <laughs> well, yeah. Chappelle was there the opening night. That's not a <laughs> not a Chappelle guy. No. no, nobody nobody really knows how to run a comedy club well, and I'm sure Joe Rogan doesn't either. He just gets he ha opens up a space and then he has three comics get up and do comedy every night, and that's the worst way to run a comedy club. So, I'm the what's, what's the option? What's the better way? The you better way, like the that. better way is to okay. Let me ask you this. Okay, so you've got three comics. Mm, you're gonna have one first. Who do you put up first? Who do you okay. make the headliner? I mean, who do you make the MC? The worst the comic. Act, the best act, the second best act, or the third best act? Probably the second best act. That would be logical, wouldn't it? Yeah. If they right. do. They put the third best act no. as the MC. And then they put the, you know, they they just do it in that order, in the order. And my theory was I always put the second best comic I had on the bill as the opening act. Because you want the evening to start off on a high note. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you can't put up the headliner because that's blowing your headliner. But then you go and you, you, uh, you put up the uh, second best person and then you put up the, the headliner. But the second best person should actually be the MC. Mm -hmm. And most of these clubs don't do that. And I bet if you go to Joe Rogan's club, he doesn't do that either. Well, and, and usually the, the MC comes on between acts two and does another couple of minutes. Yeah, and that's the idea. You know, they can keep the crowd really going. I once I once I had a comic when I was doing a comp when I was doing a show, uh, uh, was Warren Thomas. And I said, I'm putting you on uh, first. And he was insulted by that. He said, why are you putting me on first? I'm not that, that bad. And I said, no, I'm putting you on first because you're the second best comic I've got. And I need a heavy opener. Mm -hmm. I, I said, don't tell anybody. I bury the worst comic in the middle. <laughs> I used to do five acts. I, I uh, put him in the middle. And that uh, he, he began to understand that. You know, but I I always had my shows that way, and nobody else did. Comedy clubs are horrible; they're terrible. Just to uh, 
Rogan, just to stop with Rogan for a second, he uh, is is built basically rebuilding the comedy store in Austin. Uh, he's got two rooms. Um, there, it's a cycle of teaching people as well. He's got a very similar model to the comedy store, but they say improve. But what you're talking about there, pro wrestling is also booked that way. Good pro wrestling always starts with a hot match at the beginning, but not the main event. Right. And then you have a couple other matches that build to the main event from there. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. But so far as uh, the comedy store being a model for anything, that makes me want to vomit. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you ever had dealings with Missy Shore. Anyway, uh, and then uh, let's see here. Um, uh, uh, our good friend who never says anything, Edward Berger. That's he's right. He's going to tell us. He closes off all the time. I how think. he's doing. He's I'm doing pretty good. I've been Headline. battling bed bugs last week. Oh, bed bugs? Yeah. Bed yeah. bugs? Yeah, I had bed bugs. Horrible. So what do you do for that? You call an exterminator. They <laughs> give them a big box of money and they come and do something. How long did you have that mattress? Oh, the, ma oh, the mattress, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> Why don't you just throw out the mattress? Oh well, I don't know. Well, they could be hiding in the house somewhere. You know, well, they're they're very sneaky. Not that easy. Oh, yeah. oh they hang yeah. out elsewhere beside the bed. Yeah, yeah, and then they, you know. I didn't know. I bought some bed bug spray because I thought we had bed bugs, and it turned out we didn't. But I had this big bottle of spray that I couldn't uh, use for anything else. I finally have. got rid of it, so now the bed bugs could move in. Yeah, you know, it's safe. It's you safe. don't even want to say that in in jest. No. Nope. It's not a funny thing. No. Really. Yeah. You don't find it hilarious. <laughs> not a bit. And he's right. It, it doesn't it doesn't cost a little bit. It costs a lot. Did yeah. they send the dog, Edward? What's that? Did they send the dog to sniff around? Uh, they they sent in and they have a dog. They didn't bring a dog. They just came uh, in and sprayed the whole uh, uh I assume you see say I can't stay in the house while they're doing it. But did so, they uh, did they did they find that the bed the bed bug doc, uh, dogs worked or or that that was just a, a kind of a ploy to get people to spend a lot of money? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But did anyway, you get so a new mattress? Oh uh, no! They, they didn't say anything. he didn't say I need a new mattress. He just said, uh, you know, just wash all the sheets and everything. And they came in and sprayed, right? Yeah, right, right, everywhere in the house. Yeah. Wow. They did. Where, where did I see a thing on bed bugs? Maybe it was on YouTube, and they're they're ugly little things. Yeah, I know. You know. Did you see them? Could you see them physically? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, bit a lot. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm from, uh, yeah. yeah. They usually bite in threes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we move over to Paul Eleven. How are you, Paula? <laughs> uh, was this your way to change the subject? Uh, I, I appreciate that, actually. <laughs> Bedbugs, yeah. Yeah. You didn't have bedbugs, did you? <laughs> Not that I know of. Oh, okay, fine. You know. You get these little bites, don't you, all the time? Uh, right, right. Yeah. And you would know if you had them. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and then, of course, we go to Len LaFrisco. Uh, uh, ans answer uh, Albert's question. How are you? I'm well, thank you, sir. I, uh, after 42 years in the IT business, retired on February 1st. So, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. For you. Yep. So and but the happy, man, right? Very happy about that. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. If it wasn't for this hour every week, I'd probably shoot myself in the throat. <laughs> yeah. well, how hey, old are you? Up Alex at night. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How old are you now? Uh, 62. I'll be 63 in July. Oh, okay. So it's not really time to retire yet, but you did anyway. You know, the contract ended. It felt like the right time. Uh, I talked to my financial person. She says, I'm good. So, uh, you know, I'm good. My my financial person says I'm fine if I don't want to eat. Well, as long as you don't live for another year. <laughs> um, That's all good. See. Yes, uh, uh, Charlene Solis. 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 Yeah. Doing doing well. Kind of sad because my um my 
daughter and my grandchildren are moving away. So, oh. and oh, I have you... them yeah. three to four days a week with me. Well, so I'm kind of sad about where that. Are they moving? <laughs> where, are they moving? where are they moving? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, they're moving to Rockland, which is about two and a half hours away from here. Yeah. We're in the area. They're going to be it's up past Sacramento. But it's not like it is, yeah. like, it's not going to be like it is now where I see them, you know, four to five times a week. So, yeah. 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 So, anyway, but you have a good relation with your daughter and all. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I think so. I don't know about her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just would be really nice if they were close by, right? Yeah. 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 Plus, you know, the great thing I've been told about being a grandmother is they're not your kids. So you can love them all you want because after all they are your grandkids and mm -hmm. spoil them. But then yeah, somebody picks, pick, somebody picks them up and they go home. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. You but know. they're spoiled. I'll tell you what. My daughter says, "If I oh guess what I have for you guys?" She's like, "Get in, buy them something else." I go, "Yeah." She goes, "Well, let us stay here. I'm not taking any more toys home." <laughs> <laughs> so you spoil them. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. They're how my many, babies. How many grandchildren are there? Two? two granddaughters. One's going to be two in May, and the other one will be four in July. Wow. So, uh, really oh, that's so why, why is your daughter moving? Well, they want to get out of the Bay Area. So yeah. they, the schools, and the, they're not anywhere near going to school yet. What I hear, everybody wants to get out of the Bay yeah. Area. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's the traffic. The, I, I've been everything. told by my good friend, Larry Bubbles Brown, who I talk to at least once every two weeks, he says, you wouldn't want to move back to San Francisco. He said, it's mm -mm. just horrible. Just disgusting. Uh, and the homeless issue is high. The homeless, you know what I told, I was told Van Ness Avenue, which was, I guess, the fancy avenue that we had in San Francisco and all the car dealerships were on that and all the big hotels were there. Quite a few hotels were there. Uh, now has nothing but tents of homeless living on on Van Ness Avenue. Am I right? Oh yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I just I just don't understand it. Well, let's go to Mandy and find out how Mandy is. How, how are you, Mandy? I mean, this is a question from Albert, and I figured, why not? We never ask you people how you are because I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. I'm <laughs> You're okay. No, nothing yeah. extraordinary. Your, your daughter lives in New York now. Yes. Is she enjoying it? Had back surgery last week, which is sad. She's only 27, but she has something wrong with her one of her discs. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. But. Uh, my refrigerator was leaking this morning, so mm -hmm. if I could get a new refrigerator. Okay, well, let's see. So far, so far, let's tick this off now. <laughs> uh, your uh, your daughter had a a disc surgery, and your refrigerator was leaking. Yes. Anything else? But my friend and I are getting one of those tiny campers together. You know, those little teardrop tiny campers you can get. Yeah. In England, they call them uh caravans yeah yeah okay yeah but yeah we went uh this weekend and found one this man like makes them he's about 73 years old and makes them he rents out a storage one of those storage spaces yeah and um he's made like 65 of them wow and so yeah we went and looked at it and gonna get it so we can go camping yeah, and now the 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 uh old the Continuing story has been the adventures with your she shed. Yeah. <laughs> she got a home and the first thing she built was a she shed, as she calls it. Yeah, I had one built. It's fine. It's doing good. And I even attached a little hook to it for a bird feeder. So I'm officially a bird Wait, watcher. Didn't you have trouble with that she shed, though, that they didn't like you yeah. building it? I had to give them drawings, and a picture, and they said, match my house and all this bull crap, but they haven't bothered me since. Now, so what was this? Permit was, fee, they're fine. Was this a, uh, 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 an organization that you have there? A, a homeowners? A homeowners no, it's the, the city. It's the city that I live wow. in. I live in the city limits, yeah. So I was supposed to have had a permit and I did not have a permit, but they 
portable storage shed. Like you can buy them at Home Depot. I see. Lowe's. Yeah. Okay. I actually went to kind of like an independent person that builds them, and he came and built it on my property, just as a favor. He could have built it on his his place and brought it, but he just came and built it there. And they saw it being constructed. That's why they freaked out. Wow. It's your it's property it. crying out loud. <laughs> Neighbors weren't complaining. What the heck? No, my neighbor loves it. She she thought it and she's lived there for like 50 years. She was she thought, I can't believe they gave you a problem, but it's fine. That they just have to justify their jobs, I guess. Now here's the person I'm afraid to ask this question. <laughs> How are you doing, Marjorie? Oh, <laughs> you don't want to know. see, I don't know because I never pay attention to her. So it's true. I'm me, doing how, are, fine. how are you doing? I'm doing fine. No, really? that's not <laughs> what I hear. That's the end of conversation. Oh my that's god, fine. my back's killing me. Da, 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 da. That's like ask me how I'm doing. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Is when we ask people, uh, how are you doing? Are we really saying, now ask me how I'm doing? Do we really care? Don't you care how I'm doing? I care how you're doing. Do you really? Yes, I do. I care desperately <laughs> how you No, really. What, what are you giving me? No, Albert. <laughs> I didn't say a thing. Gee, uh, good I had a crick comment. in my neck. <laughs> if it weren't good for the comedy of this show, I'd be insulted. Okay, you know when is when is it going to be good for the comedy of the show? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I got this every single morning for like yeah. eight years and nine, loving it. Nine years was it? Nine years? It was nine. It was years. almost ten. Close yeah, to ten. Almost ten. They couldn't let us get to a tenth anniversary and then dump us. No. Mm -mm. You must have had a bonus kicking in in two years. Uh, no, bonus. I think, I think we, we were at Sirius XM. No <laughs> no. You know what, you know what Shecky always firmly believed was that between the two of us, we were making too much money. Well, I, I think that's true. Yeah. Between the two of us, I think there was something like a quarter of a million dollars a year they had to put out. No, I don't think that much. No, no, it's no, it was less, <laughs> it was less than that. Oh, yeah, that show was so cheap. I don't know why they didn't keep it on. It was uh, between the two of us. It was almost forty thousand dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't keep us. <laughs> no, it was more than that. It was more. It was more yes, it was more. more like, it was more. Yeah, it was more like close to two hundred thousand. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Yeah, yeah. You were right. the highest paid producer, I think, outside of Howard's at, at Sirius <laughs> XM. I don't, I don't know. It, I don't know. No, because you got a lot of money out of it. For, for that place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and they, I never knew you before they hired you on as my producer. Yeah. I took a salary cut to come to be with you. Did you really? When I was at Disney. Beautiful. Disney. But, uh, but those days are, you know, that the industry is not, well, it doesn't, doesn't really exist anymore. So. That people don't make any money in radio. Yeah, but the, no. you, you were over at what WPLJ, so that was Disney, right? Right. Yeah. For okay. many years. Yeah. Yeah. What so does a producer was... actually do? Nothing. Thank you. Not a goddamn <laughs> thing. We all wanted to know. I just felt sorry for the guy, and I wanted to see him earn a living. It all depends on what, and I use this term loosely what the talent wants out of the producer. Mm -hmm. And some, some of those people are very autonomous. They do their own thing and they just want them to be around in case they have to get something else. Other guys want a, a producer who is able to physically produce audio, put together bits, yeah. write comedy, uh, book guests, all kinds of things. And, and there are some guys who do nothing and expect everything to be done by the producer and and it is often the case but every it, it to say you do a certain thing is is not right because it really depends on the people what he's basically with. saying is he doesn't know what the job entails no and i got away with it for like 30 40 away. years what a what a scam i was running say uh uh, uh uh albert have you booked any guests no you book them 
<laughs> really what I got. Well, you know what? I was pr- I was pretty. I I one day I'm gonna uh, I'll email you my guest list that I that are people I booked in in my time in radio, and you'd be surprised. But the problem was I was with you at Sirius, and there was a huge booking problem because there were so many shows there, and they wanted to give certain guests to certain people yeah, because yeah, they were that, was a that, yeah. that format of radio, or because the guy was bigger than your show, you know, and and yeah. that became a huge problem. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's and, have- I, and also, I didn't like to book guests because most of the uh, publicists were assholes. Well, not most of them, but a lot of them. Yeah, Albert, could- did you just produce for Alex or did you produce for anybody else while you were at Sirius? Only Alex at Sirius. Yeah. Yeah. And he ran the board, too. And he was very he was. Uh, we talked a lot on the air. He's part of the show. I mean, he's very well, in the last four months after after you kicked all the rest of them out, you know. Uh, all the more than the last four months Come oh on. garrett and then uh uh christina and uh no, i didn't get rid Michael of christina. billy i didn't and, get rid of christina. Uh, no you didn't get rid of <laughs> I, I got rid of i got, got rid of you and that I got, got rid, rid of, of michael billy because he started getting uh, there was just too interruptive into the show mm. and uh, garrett just flew off the handle all the time and one time he just flew off the handle one day and i said you know, he just takes his show too seriously. Am I right? That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you but you two remained friends after that. Oh yeah, we did. We yeah, remained we friends, friends afterwards, after right? And and Christina, when she went went somewhere else, I said, "Go," and she went, and that was just before we got let go. So she wasn't right. part of the. She's still there to this day, isn't she? Yeah, I, don't I, think. I don't know. You know, but anyway. And so, uh, wait a minute. Let me ask Jeff. How have you been doing, Jeff? I was at the doctor all day. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Checking out to make sure I'm still alive. And are you? <laughs> and I survived. And you're terrific, right? You're pretty good. That's good. Wait well, a minute. they give me give me a couple of things to be concerned about. Really? New yeah, things. As you get older, you got to be uh, think about when are you going to drive the car at night? Mm, probably not. I don't know if I can drive anymore because I get lightheaded. But then I was thinking, I said to Marjorie, when I sit down, I'm not lightheaded. So probably driving a car would not be difficult for me. Yeah. You know, Um, because we're planning on taking a massive vacation and I'd like to be able to drive, you know, so. Well, if you come over to our place, I'll let you drive in. Oh, okay. In a corner somewhere. Let me make sure. In the driveway. Yeah, you insured? (laughs) Like rain. I'm an excellent driver. (laughs) <laughs> joined by uh, uh, one of the funniest guys that calls this program. We're so happy he started joining us, and that's Don Giller. Hello, Don. Oh, Hi, sorry. Don. I'm sorry. It took 40 minutes for me to to, to log on because I'm having <laughs> issues. So I apologize for being so late. No, that's okay. Don Giller, in case you don't know, if you go on to YouTube and you see David Letterman clips many times, if you look at the bottom, it says Don Giller. He, for years, has been the only guy who was posting until Letterman decided to do it himself, was posting Letterman shows onto uh, YouTube, right? Um, I, I was not the only one. But you were was far from the only one. Did you do most of those montages of all the different things that, uh, that like, say, Chris Elliott would do, the guy in the Yeah, yeah, yeah that was me. Those are his. Oh, I got to tell you, man, I've been stuck in your world in the <laughs> last six months. Just I've, looking at that stuff, it's great. It's have absolutely you seen, fantastic. Have, Thank you. Have you seen a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but uh, I I have to finish all your stuff before I go to the doctor. Okay. Well, thank you. I I, I it's really great stuff. Um, yeah. uh, I appreciate that. It, it's it's you. I'm always uncomfortable when I hear this stuff. So uh, <laughs> what, forgive what me. Makes, what makes it's very un- nice of you. What makes you uncomfortable? Uh, uh, probably the imposter complex. The imposter. Uh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> that. Oh, the people are going to find out you're an imposter. Well, that, that that this is not my content. This is someone else's content, and and someone's going someone's going to realize that I'm just a fan. I'm just a guy. You know, I'm. I, 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 um, I. I haven't I haven't formulated this as coherently as I should, but 
I'm, I'm unnecessarily detracting from your compliment. So let's just leave it there. And, and I thank you. That, yeah, that's very my, nice. My chism is the same way, though. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he, but, but, yeah but he's who, Canadian. But who are the who are the, <laughs> who are the best curators of a performer's history than the, the ultimate fans who can put this stuff together and know what they're doing? You know, I mean, for years, I remember that uh, Shecky used to collect films. He had cans and cans and cans of film. Eventually, they started a company to start selling footage to people, and they were able to put all these cans of film somewhere else. But I, at one point, went down to a thing that happened on, uh, what is it, Ninth Avenue, down around 42nd Street. And it would happen every Saturday, and all these film fans would get together. I, do you know about this, Don? They yeah, yes, uh, uh, you, you've mentioned this and they would, uh, they, previously. They, they would sell each other films out of the trunks of their cars. And these guys were the guys who preserved film and kinescopes and things like that that would have otherwise disappeared from the face of the earth. Were there any of them non-pornographic? No, yeah, of course. So the one <laughs> Out of the I back like of a trunk. Up, what's going on here? <laughs> what I like to bring up is is uh, they they had a, a show they did of uh, the Petrified Forest, which was a play that uh, the movie starred um, uh, Humphrey Bogart, and he did the television version of it too. They did a two-hour television version of the play, which I think was by Maxwell Anderson, and. Uh, they had lost all the audio off the first hour. They had a copy of the first hour, but not with audio. And so they never they never could ultimately they had a hard time restoring it. And I mentioned it to Shaggy. I said, did you hear they were looking for, you know, the, the first hour was sound. He says, oh, I got it in my basement, <laughs> you know. And it was people like Shecky who actually kept this stuff alive. So fans like Giller, are a treasure. Sorry yeah, do that again. You can blush if you want to, Don. It yeah. comes down to the fact that he cares about it. Like Don, how many pieces of footage do you have that was accidentally thrown out by some staffer over at Universal or, or NBC or, uh, you know, you've got so many things that 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 the original companies don't have anymore. And thank God for that. And if you didn't care so much, uh, you know, it'd be lost forever. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so that my friend albert is how everybody's doing are you up to date now i'm very <laughs> pleased to know everybody's doing fine yes yeah. i'm up to date yeah. and thank uh, you you know uh, i i it, it's always and it's a nice group of people so you like to hear they're doing fine yes i do <laughs> and it's the most we've heard out of uh out of uh, edward Berger. Uh, in weeks. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> that, that, it, Ed, it, Edward, you should do a bed bug commercial. I think <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm now an expert on bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he uh, he should go out and try to be voices in cartoons. Mm. You know, it's definitely cartoon voice if I ever heard one. But. Um, Anyway, so it, well, it's nice. To, it's nice to hear. We actually caught up with everybody today. That's kind of nice. Thank you, Albert, for asking that question. Um, but uh, does everybody have have good plans for the rest of the week or with this weekend? Anybody doing anything interesting this weekend? I want to okay. see my mom. Oh, these are the <laughs> so these are the dullest people alive. Yes, he just <laughs> raised his hand. Your Turn music. off your Turn your, your audio. Mic. Turn your mic on, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> there you are. There you are, I think. My wife is going to Florida. No. Just get back from Florida? Yes. Yeah. And she has a friend who's 94 or 99 years old. And she always wanted to go to Florida. So Pam's taking her to Florida. Hey. Wow. Yeah, what a wow, good wow, wow. That's nice. Well, anyway, yeah. that's nice. And unfortunately, my wife isn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah. 
except tomorrow she's going down to her doctor to have blood drawn and then expects me to take her out to dinner. I didn't say that. That's not how it went. <laughs> how did it go? I said, I'll take you out to dinner if you meet me when I leave the doctor's. Nice. That's because she has to entice Alex to pick her up from the hospital. Yeah. No, I'm taking a subway. That's the best deal you're going to get, Alex. I Listen, take when I had a kidney problem, which took me to the hospital for three and a half days. Okay. I wound up in the hospital for three and a half days with this kidney stone. Okay. And I was in immense pain. She would not go to the emergency room with me. Okay. Oh, 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 that's oh, wanna, oh, that's oh, wait, 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 wait. Do you want to talk about hospitals and pickups? Oh, no. Do you really want to go there, Alex? <laughs> well, look at the time. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we've run out of time for the show today. God, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that you always bring that up, and I'm just. I'm just saying money. major Alex. spinal surgery, and he makes me oh. get a taxi. How many, have any of you had a kidney stone? <laughs> no, I may have. Just wait oh. till you get one. <laughs> yeah. Just wait. I had a gallstone. It was pretty bad. Are they? Uh, have you heard about them, Don? They're not fun. They're not supposed to be fun, are they? Yeah. No, I, I remember it was a, a weekend in '86, uh, hmm. and I, I think I probably passed it. But but so I didn't need any surgery or hospitalization. Uh, but yeah, it was, I I thought I was pregnant. <laughs> I got yes, married on a weekend that... in '86, and I it was like passing a kidney stone. So, <laughs> hey, well, listen, it's really great. Once again, it's just a nice bunch of people. Can, can you stand it, folks? Nice bunch of people. <laughs> we didn't argue with each other. We didn't <laughs> yell and scream about politics. Uh, I mean, you should know that Trump is a jerk, but you know. <laughs> you, you don't want to, Oh, can I? Oh, can I just say something really quick? I was watching this thing about Hitler, and there was two things they said in there. The first one was that he believed in this German word. They said it, which means fake news. And yeah. the second one was that he, um, um, oh, what was it? Oh, God, I forgot what. It scared the hell out of me, though. It sounded just like the rhetoric he's been saying. No more politics, but. <laughs> No, I was it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. No, the the Hitler was very much yelling fake news, fake news, fake yeah. news. You know, I was I was so surprised at how similar the 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 rhetoric was. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and and his amazing uh, his amazing likeness to Mussolini. I think when he's doing this kind of thing. You know? mm. Well, anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. We don't do that on this show. Hey, thank you very much, Mike Chisholm, for joining us today. Love Charles you guys. Wallace, always a pleasure. Uh, Paul Levin, gosh, you're going to come back here soon, aren't you? Hope so. Yeah, Len LaFrisco. Sure. Uh, he just left, so I. Uh, but you're invited back here anytime. <laughs> Charlene Solis, you're all invited here if you're ever in New York. Mandy O'Brien, you come up to see your daughter, you can stay here. We have a guest room. Yeah. Um, yeah, as soon as her back is better. I highly recommend it. His rates are a little high, but it's a nice place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlene Solis, thank you. M Mandy, thank you. Uh, uh, Marjorie, thank you. I'll see you in a little bit here. Uh, Albert, you know, you call this show anytime, okay? You're terrific. You just When I remember guy. 4 p.m. on Monday, I'm here. I, I got to call <laughs> you hey. and have another one of our little... <laughs> Get together. And thanks to Don, time. by the way. Again, thanks, Don. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being here, and of course Don Giller, who we love having here because he. I just got here. I know, but <laughs> in that time, you've said more funny things than I have. So you know. <laughs> by me. That's Finally, awesome. to sign us off with his farewell address to the nation, <laughs> Edward Berger, who says, "That's all, folks." Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We'll see you later.